Afternoon guys, welcome back to GKP. I just thought I'd well have another go another little bit of an unboxing. Um I've just been and picked up myself. I'll let me make sure I get this right. The Yamatsu, I think that's so Yamitsu, uh Algae Master Ultraviolet Water Clarifier. So I thought I'd uh, open it up, let you have a look, and then we're gonna go and get the rest of and the remainder of the filter system plumbed in. So, let's see. I'll let you have a look at this, and then we'll me make a bit of a start on what else we've got to do. I'll spin camera around, and I'll get back to you in a tick. So there we go, guys. I might be pronouncing this wrong. Yamitsu, Algae Master, 1100 watt, uh, sorry, 11 watt ultraviolet water clarifier. <clears throat> now, for all those who don't know, the 11 watt it's only a small ultraviolet but it's perfectly adequate for up to 6500 liters so for anybody that's got out there with the massive great big ultraviolets you really don't need them guys because this little thing although it's small will do six and a half thousand liters and i think if memory serves that's about Mm, yeah, I'm not sure. A couple, couple of thousand gallons ish. I've forgotten what it said. Anyway, but it is what it is. We can uh, we can have a Google that one later on and find out exactly. But yeah, this is the uh, the new the new part, the new component for the pond. Um, I did ask a bit of a question, and I will also ask you guys while I've got you all here. Not so much here, but watching. Um, what do you think? Um, what I'm going to do and why I'm going to set it up is bottom drain to pump, pump, UV, UV to filter, then from filter with the return. Now, my reason for thinking this way is this is a two inch and all the Yamatsui Algae Masters come with a two inch feed. Now, obviously my return is under gravity and the two inch feed that they've got here would obviously be reducing, sorry, inch and a half feed, inch and a half outlet, um, would be reducing my flow return. So that would mean that it would be coming in on an inch and a half, going through the filter system on a two and then returning back through if I did it the opposite way around on an inch and a half again which would be restricting my flow which wouldn't be good sorry excuse me which wouldn't be good obviously for the uh, I'm doing a good job of cutting this open there we go which wouldn't be good for the restriction of flow there goes the knife just probably just put a big hole through my flow in so we'll get this open and we'll pop it out and we'll have a look at it together Warranty card needs to be filled in and sent off and registered. No doubt nowadays that will probably be able to be done online too, so we don't really need to post that off. The uh, instructions Again, a little bit of an instruction there of what it's saying you need to do for the horsetail 
is the correct way and the incorrect way is obviously whatever size horse tail that you're going through whatever size pipe work you were wanting to use this on if you were using half inch 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 and a quarter whichever it is or whatever those sizes are i don't know if it actually says on there what they are it doesn't but what you need to do is uh, as shown there you don't just push your pipe on you need to trim it off accordingly so i probably telling you all or teaching you all how to suck eggs there with that one but you know you know some people do make the mistake of uh, actually not trimming them down I've seen it in the past so let's just get this out of the box pop that down there for a second little bit of a simple thing there's nothing very much to it guys but one good thing about it let me just put that down is it does come with a plug and one heck of a lot of cabling we don't need anything anywhere near that length as it's going to be going inside the shed so we don't need to be worrying about uh, the uh, unit being outside and getting water damage because it's going to be inside those tails if i was using them would be put in trimmed down to suit and it is from what i can see pretty much a very simple little unit one very very small little bulb inside there a quart sleeve running through now i know that this will work on my pond as my pond at present is only 3,600 litres. Now, if I were to take it up to 6,500 litres, that would be double the pond that I've already, well, almost double the pond that I've got. And I don't think I'll be going that large. So it's still going to be within the, re the regions of capable of handling my pond. So everybody that's got anything bigger, I do believe that the 25 watt, from memory serves what I've seen on their website is capable of doing 19,000 litres so it's a it's a big step up from that one and does a lot more literage and I still to this day don't understand why so many people have ultraviolets as big as what they do on the ponds if anybody wants to give me a comment as to why and explain why they go way bigger than what they need to please feel free to share because I, I mean I'm all about learning, I'm all about uh, sharing information with each other so we can all learn from it and if there's a reason or any reason as to what I'm saying or anything, anything anybody disagrees with but on Cockney Coy's specification this one does six and a half thousand litres and my pond's not going to be getting that big so it should be ample enough. All I need to do now is connect this up in line with all the rest of the uh, the system and get it all plumbed in so i'll take it out to the shed and we'll make a start guys right guys so this is the plan this is what i'm thinking of doing i'm thinking of bringing this um pipe work in through this wall now to the pump from the pump to the UV somehow some way shape or form not 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet which position and how I'm going to have it but we're going to plumb it in as best as we possibly can um, once we've got that plumbed in we're then going to be carrying that through up to this drum on the feed in so I think I'm going to bring the pipe across the bottom here underneath the pipe where which I've just disconnected now for getting this barrel out so I can put the feed in um, bulkhead fitting which is up here so I'm going to get this drilled out bang a load of PTFE tape around it again nip that up and bang that in to this drum so I will have one elbow I mean I dare bet really I could probably bring the feed in up here and have the feed coming in across the bottom here one elbow up and feeding into the to, to the barrel there it doesn't necessarily need to go through the side and the reason why I'm doing this is this 
height that it comes up here rather than coming up all the way along behind the back of the shed and in through halfway up here it just be slightly lower so I'll have less loss of uh, height, head height pumping coming in and just stepping up this one area so that's the idea, that's what we're going for I don't know if I'll put it on this side or if I'll take it around and put it on the side it just means again the, the more bends I put in the more back pressure I'm going to get so the less bends I can put in the better so that's the plan I'll just chuck that down there um, <clears throat> one or two people mentioned about the cable being short well it isn't really all that short when you look at it it's all laid out here let me just shift that out of the way one second and we'll be able to see together a bit better this is the transformer and the power pack for the controller device and I believe that that's all it's for as well obviously for the pump as well but people were saying in the comments that you uh, this doesn't look very waterproof well no you're right it doesn't look very waterproof but this great big shed that it's inside definitely does so waterproofing of the pump and of the transformer for the pump and I am I am using a, a marine sump pump for my pond but I can't see is it making an ounce of difference myself it's uh, within its capabilities it can be used for a marine and fresh water and guess what guys that's fresh water whether it be inside or whether it be outside I can't see as that makes an ounce of difference so it doesn't know it's not inside a sump all it knows is it's got to pump water so if it does that job jobs are good one. and it was uh, relatively cheap at 99 pounds and delivered within less than 24 hours so I can't knock it so far so good the idea is to come in into the feed through the shed and then obviously we'll be coming through the wall hopefully between there underneath some way shape or form of altering all this lot which might be another bit that I do at a later date but I just want to get it in and running first but I'm also going to leave this system running till the very last minute this system running till the very last minute so that way then I can test this new system and get the old system decommissioned but be good to switch over and go instantly so that's the idea that's what we're going for. I'll make a start. I'll make a start. We'll get a few bits and bats done. Some of the solvent welding, the um, inch and a half feed in and BTFE again because that one didn't come with a seal either. So we'll get that all done, get that plumbed in, tightened up, nipped up and then the pipe working and then It'll be a case of dropping the retro bottom drain in, solvent welding all them, connecting all that up, and then connecting to the pump and uh, the, 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 the official turn on and see what, <laughs> that sounded wrong, the official switch on and then uh, see what happens. So I'll make a start, get a bit done, and I'll get back to you in a bit, guys. See you in a tick. All right, guys, we've been quite busy, got a few bits all uh, bonded together. What I'm going to do now is just have a quick walkthrough of what I've done so far and show you where we're up to. So, first of all, these are all now solvent welded and joined together. There is the next piece to solvent weld and pass through, but I'm going to do that one last. Pop that one in there like that and do that one last. That one's still to weld. What I've done is I have put in the the feed, which is all solvent welded. And I think I may have have to do that one there. I've done this one, might have to do that one. Can't remember if I've already solvent welded that. Can how it feels there? Yeah, it's already solvent welded. That one's already done. So yeah, the feed's in, solvent welded there. Um, that now comes along to this 
which is, like I said, is already solvent welded. I just need to solvent weld this joint on to here, and then solvent weld this joint on to, to here. We've got the pipe solvent welded onto this bracket and feeds up to the underside of the ultraviolet, which I need to solvent weld that one, and then solvent weld this one, and then solvent weld this one. But this one is already solvent welded up, hole drill through. Again, like I said, I'm going to silicon seal this up, and then it comes through temporarily just for now because obviously the new pond bill is going to be uh, changing but it comes through the shed wall there goes through underneath the stone and onto uh, 45 here I'm now going to take a piece of pipe across and then an elbow down and connect it to the retro boundary so, so far so good and then this, all these ones, will be disconnected from that point there. And this section will be decommissioned. Um, like I said, got the retro bottom drain there. And um, I haven't sold well these up yet, but I'm going to do. Yeah, these are solvent weld up. And then I'm going to do a piece of pipe to run across the bottom. I have the remaining one length to do that with. And the other one that will be to finish off the flush out waste, which is going to go just out there because that little piece of pipe there is just an off cut that I've put in just to, you know, just for demonstration purposes, that's all. But all this now. These are all solvent welded up, all fully solvent welded and the idea is I shall just put this back together and show you how it looks, dry fit and then I'm going to get them all solvent welded up. Right, so there we go, this is how she's going to look. This is going to be a cable tie or some kind of fastening around there, but I mean as it is, it's pretty sturdy. But just in case it gets an opening, in fact I might just actually cable tight around that one there and then this is how it will look at present I don't have a shut off valve to the feed and what I'm thinking of doing is obviously this pipe here just fitting a, a shut off valve either somewhere around about here or cut the pipe solvent weld a gate valve on there and then add it in, in here so I'll have a, a gate valve here that I can open and close the feed. Uh, the pump itself does have a power off and that stops it from flowing and I think it does a uh, 10 minutes so so far so good the whole system is starting to take shape so that's how she's going to look the next stage then after that will be to connect up the return which will go through that wall and then take a sweep and come back in on the return down there so there's the plan sheds upside down Bits and bats all over the place again, but starting to, starting to get there. Okay, good. Sorry, that was me just knocking the lid off. I've also, on the inside of this barrel, put a little directional feed um, on the inside of, of that bulkhead. There is a directional feed, so the water is kind of jetting off and down at an angle so it circulates and spirals up and through that's well pointing up sorry so it spirals through so there we go we're getting there it's a lot more difficult than what you think when you're trying to solvent weld all these parts when you need to give them a little twist with the solvent weld uh, to make sure that they're all sealed 
fingers crossed. They all look nice, good seals. Obviously, uh, there's a little bit of pipe where I've spread it around to make sure it looks nice and neat. But uh, it's a bit ropey, but still does the job. Again, and again, all these are sealed up. All these are sealed up. And all them are sealed up. So, easy usable. Easy to uh, get access, access to. And all open and close. It's weird when you first open a gate valve, it's a little bit tight, where it must have had like a bit of pressure against it. But yeah, all up and running. The uh, beauty of what I've done, in my eyes, is pumps on the inside, controls are on the inside, ultraviolet's on the inside. Now, it does say this way up, and that little arrow is this, this way up, is purely so that if you have this box on the outside, if you don't have it facing arrows pointing up like that, and having this skywards, then apparently these can can leak so and then obviously tripping out all your system with mine being as it is and where it is that's not going to be an issue because it's indoors so next thing to do will be when the new pump comes because for some reason I purchased it on a 48 hour and it's not going to be until Tuesday this week but then the pump will be sitting on there a series of holes drilled through and then as I've got that one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but just here is a hole and then I'll be popping through the uh, pipework for the bubblers so that I can boil them up and clean them up ready for uh, flushing them out. So, so far so good. It's been uh, quite an enjoyable task. I've, I've enjoyed it to be fair. Although it can be a little difficult and you've got to be pretty quick with solvent well because it starts to go off faster than what I've... Uh, well I've never really done that much of it before. I've done a few odd, you know, odd one here and there but not uh, not like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight joints all at once which is uh, a little bit difficult but yeah we get in there. It's starting to take shape. The next stage is to do, like I said, is to get the retro bottom draining and then hopefully I'm going to see if I can get some slightly larger pipe lagging, like bigger than this stuff, so that I can lag the pipes up ready for winter. I know that's obviously you know, way off, but I'd rather uh, get it all done and done in one go if possible. That way then <clears throat> when I come to do the pond build, literally all I will have to do is dig the hole brick it up and Yorkshire stone it up and then uh, make it into the design and the, the size of what I want to do. My only concern is, uh, oh, I'll show you. My only concern is going to be this, uh, the Japanese Acer. I'd much rather keep that as it is without having to disturb it. So perhaps maybe when I make the pond bigger, I'll come this way somewhat and round this way somewhat and then tie in and that way then I can perhaps maybe have that acer growing over the corner of the pond and I can move these plants here that are in a kidney basket and these ones that are in a kidney basket and look at this though, these are proper starting to grow, they've uh, really taken shoot now. Oh, um, and I don't know if I've already mentioned this, if I did, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but the little, um, oh, the little snow white asagi fry that I had is no more. Let's just have a check, 10, 12, 13 degrees. And can I get that to focus? Can I heck? Whoa, there he has. Pond's at 13 degrees, so it's still not that warm really, and it has dropped off these last couple of nights. But the uh, little snow white asagi like to come up here and just hang around in the shallows of this pond. And I think my friend the heron 
I snatched him because it's gone. I can't find him anywhere. I'm saying him. Could have been a sheep, not sure. But yeah, disappeared. Which I'm a bit gutted about because although it was only a very small and cheap fry, it was looking good. It would have been a nice fish. So I'm a bit messed with it. But that's the only thing I can put it down to being is that the, uh, the heavens been round and snatched him because I, I did try to spook him out of this area a couple of times and he wasn't having none of it, he just kept coming back and I don't know if it was because of the size difference between him and the others and he felt a little bit uh, unsafe around the bigger fish not that they're a great deal bigger than what he was but yeah, obviously he might have not felt as comfortable being at half the size of a small bonsai toy that I've got with only a tiny little thing. But yeah. That's what we're up to at press. And I might try to see if I can find a replacement in a, a bigger size and treat myself at some point and pick up a snow white asagi. Because I did like the look of it. But yeah, these things happen. I mean, it's it's definitely not been anything else. I've checked all the little creases that I've, on the folds on the liner that I've got. I've had the I've had the net off and checked them all to see if I could see anything anywhere, and there's no sign of him anywhere at all. I've moved all the plants. I've moved all the lily pots. I've checked behind the back of the kidney pot there and behind the back of this one, and it's, it's, it's not in here. So the only thing I can put it down to is the uh, heron, or maybe a cat, or something else has swept him out and been away with him so sick now anyway back to what we was doing which is getting this up and running now everybody said to me that the less bends and turns the better so I have one I have two and I have three the next ones that I will have will be the swept 45 just under there you see it? And then the next one will be a 45, uh, sorry, a 90, down and through, and another 90, and that will be the last of the bins. That'll be that's the best I can do. So it's the minimum amount that I can have to get it in. I do think if I'd have been coming up here, along here, along there, along there, up, round and back and up and through and everything, there'd have been way more than what I've got. So uh, the best of what I can do I think for the possible route now all this lot I'm not too bothered about that being visible I can hide that off with plants pots Yorkshire stone build of some description or whatever I'm going to do when I change all this system out and get rid of all that so so I'm going to uh, have a mouthful of my coffee before it goes cold <coughs> Christmas cup from my uh, grandson. Um, what I'm going to do now, choose me, is crack on, get these last bits solvent welded up, and then they're done. And then all I really need to do then is connect up the bottom drain, and then I've got to start working on the uh, the return. The return I might take on tomorrow because I believe it is pushing up to 5.35 now, Saturday evening. So I'm going to be not running out of daylight, but excuse me, I've got little bits of glue solvent weld. I've been biting off and pulling off my fingers and got the stuff all stuck all over my hands everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's been, took a little bit longer than what I thought it would do, but the beauty of doing it all yourself. You don't need to rush. There's no no need for me to rush. I can take it nice and steady and then get it all up and done as best as I possibly can. There is another thing I'm going to be changing too and I do believe I've still got the old ones. Which, well, I'm saying old ones, they're not really that old. I took them off. The uh, air stones. I have two more of them and I've been advised by somebody to change this out 
for my aerator to the pond because obviously the, the the new area that I'm getting is going to just be the, for the, for the filter system. Now I'll spin this round so I can show you. On this little aerator that I've got, it runs two. There's four four little valves with your normal standard hose, and then it came with this kit in the kit, so to say, with these little Y sections for you to connect two into one. To give you, sorry, not a bad shot. To give you two into one to feed the two stones that I've got, one there and the other one just before the return there. And I've been advised that um, I'll get better flow, more air, by separating all these off and making four lines, and then having the four lines into the pond. So what I'm thinking of doing is. Lifting, uh, running a, a new a couple of lengths of air line and taking one to this point here and then another one to this point there. So I'll have four points of oxygen to the to the pond and then the retro brain, uh, bottom drain in the middle. And my hope is that the four areas of drainage will push some of them up towards the drain and we should be, should be doing good. Should get it centralised and then you know do the same method again then when it comes to the uh, to the new pond as well um, that pump there that's there now that's running just basically circulating water i mean i've got it so why not use it i'm thinking about putting this back again as i had it before and just bobbing it back down here in this corner because i do get a lot of build up crap around here so putting it back down here, just behind the, to the side of the lily pot, blasting the jet of water straight across there. So it'll literally just be moving water, just to shove it and muck and crap back towards this end. Then the return, which will be at that side, I'll be moving, a moving muck towards the centre. That way then I should have one, two, three, four, five, six areas moving all of everything to the centre of the pond, to the bottom drain. I don't know if it'll work, but it's a theory, and I'm going to give it a go, see what it does. It's going to cost next to milk for a couple of lengths of the air hose, and the pump's already there. It's just doing nothing sitting there other than just circulating water. Making a little bit of water movement, but hopefully that's, well, that's uh, a little bit of an idea of what I've had. Now, I might upgrade the size of the pump and put that one in, because that one's only a 2,000 litres an hour, I think, and that one's a 4. So I might take the pump out of this cage and just have that pump down there instead. As in, not in the big box, just actually the pump itself and maybe put it inside a... I don't know, something or other. Behind the back of the lily pots so it's blowing the muck out from behind the back of the lily pots so that nothing settles and becomes stagnant behind my, my, my plants that I've got in the pond. Just an idea, see what it does. Otherwise, it's just another pump that's going to be up for grabs. Or maybe I might even upgrade the pump system on that one. And put that 2,000 litre an hour pump on there. And make a bit more of a filter system for that. Oh no. Could use this one. And put that one on there. It's done a decent job on this. So, this is another option. But, yeah, anyway. That were enough waffling. But, like I said, I'm going to crack on with these, get these all solvent welded up, and then hit me up in the comments, guys. What do you think? Um, whether I should have an isolation valve or a shut off valve just after the, the ultraviolet, or maybe perhaps put one in. Uh, yeah, so maybe put one in. Um, one in here, or one in here, or one in here, or one in here. So we're going to go for one, two, three, or four. 
if you could do me a favour guys and uh, stick your comments in down below let me know where you think I should put one and what type I should put in should I put in another sliding valve like this one or should I put in a, a ball valve so that I can isolate the water should I ever need to do going into the to the feed um, I've been advised to put one in but I don't know where it's going to be the best place here would be, be before the pump after the pump after the UV or before the entrance so one two three or four guys do us a huge favor and um, bang us a comments in below let, comments in below let me know um, I'd appreciate the help the feedback and your opinions so right I'm gonna get cracked on with solvent welding all these up getting my hands all covered in that stuff again and uh, I'll get back to you in a tick Right guys, that's it for this evening, I'm going to call it a do, um, pumps connected up, everything solvent welded, wiring is semi rooted as much as I'm going to be doing for what it is, uh, UV light cable for the pump, up through and into position and working just not uh, running as of yet so it all works the pump's going but I need to prime it because it's uh, airlocked um, <clears throat> waste all plumbed in full filter systems in the pipe work is routed for the feed in uh, I've just temporarily fitted this into place. Retro bottom drains in. It needs to come back a little, so it needs an inch, a couple of inch of it. Um, and then situate into the middle, all pump out, and we're uh, we're good to go. So, so I put me pots and plants and stuff back into some kind of kind of normality. Move back in where I can. I'll sit in there. Tree back into place. So, oh. I'm not going to be able to see too much of it to be fair. Pretty good so far. Get this pump back over into situ again for the evening as it's literally kind of not, not turning dark but it's not so far off now. Um, a few bits and bats just to tidy up. Got me netting back over. Got my blue slates pieces back into position. I don't know why I'm doing it, because at the end of the day I'm all going to be switching it all and moving it all again tomorrow. Oh. OCD. <laughs> so, that's it in. There's the feed. There's the bottom drain. All we need to do now is... Uh, oh, just dry my hand off. All we need to do now is get it, the pump primed. Which is probably going to be the difficult bit. Um, once we've got that pump primed and the pipe filled, hopefully, we'll start filling the barrel up. Get the first barrel, let it overflow into second and third. When it gets to about three quarters of the way up, I shall knock it off and then get the return fitted and back in and flowing out. So, this evening I'll uh, go and call it a do and I'll pick back up again in the morning so see you in a bit right guys so it's the uh, morning after this is Ted Ted this is everybody on the YouTube what we're trying to do is uh, get the airlock out of the bottom drain but guess what 
I have a little grandson who wants to be with his papa. So we're struggling a little bit, aren't we? And you love being in the shed and you love coming to look at the fish. But we're struggling to do this and... Are you going to wave? Is she going to say hi? We're struggling to do this. <coughs> you want to be in close then? Okay. We're struggling to do this and do it all. We've got you in my arms. Yeah, no. So, you tell them. What do you think? Is it going to work, Ted? Huh? We don't know, do we? Hopefully. Was that, was that a yes? Did you just nod? You think it's going to work? Yeah. So, when we can... Uh, can I have it back? Yeah. So when we can get this uh, bundle of joy back with his mum, hopefully, I'm going to be able to put some... <laughs> Uh, you won't hold it, okay, you hold it. Hopefully then, we're going to be able to uh, get the pipe back filled. Once we've got the pipe back filled, we will then be able to switch the pump on and see if it works. Because at the moment I've got a bit of an airlock in it. And right now, while this little chap is here, things are a little more difficult. So, we'll get back to you in a bit, guys. And I'll uh, show you how things are going. So, say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Yeah full of uh, conversation when you're not on camera. Are you camera shy? <laughs> there we go. Right then. See you. See you soon. Bye. Right guys, well, it's uh, hang about. Let's have a quick look. It's five o'clock in the evening. Um, grandson's still here. Not getting much chance to get this done without upsetting him. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get back again to it tomorrow. <clears throat> Hopefully, fingers crossed. I think I'm going to need to pick up a valve because I keep getting the airlock back through from the first barrel to the pump and I need to stop that from flowing back. So I'm going to have to pick up a couple more valves by the look of it. Going out to a few places tomorrow uh, with some of the lads. So hopefully I should be able to pick up some then. So on this occasion, you're not going to get to see it finished, but a bit of a cliffhanger for you. Will it work? Won't it work? Will we get it to run? Time will tell. A couple of valves needed and I think we should be able to get it sorted, but until such time, I've done all I can pretty much do today. And obviously, a bit of family time, as I've always said, family comes first. So I'm going to get in there and say hello to my grandson and my daughter and my wife, as I've spent last two days pretty much messing around and tinkering around out here. Uh, the bank holiday and I would like to spend some time with the family so usual thing guys if you could do me a huge favor like share subscribe tell a friend and until next time I shall catch you on the next one keep smiling see you all soon take care